Hey everybody and welcome to Chairman of the Board. Today I'm going to talk about Twa, which is a Euro style board game for one to four players. It was released in 2010. Now Twa is one of those games that I've had on my radar for a long time. It's, as I said, it's been around for a long time and it's always on the tip of uh, Euro gamers' tongues when it comes to them recommending games. But for some reason there was always something holding me back from buying it. And that's because I've done a bit of research on it and it always seemed to me that it was like so dry and so mechanical to the point that I might not enjoy it. I thought it might be a bit too brain burnery, maybe a bit too complex and fiddly and a bit too long. Now, I finally took the plunge to buy it because I thought, you know, in this day and age when games are sticking around for that long of a time and still being talked about, um, you know, that's a real testament to the quality of a game. And, you know, as I said, especially with so many games being bought, brought out now, um, the fact that this game has stayed strong and, you know, remained so highly revered is, um, you know, that can't be ignored for me. So as I said, I, I took the plunge and I bought it and I've played it a few times now and I'm going to share my thoughts on the game. So in some respect, this game is a, a very mechanical game. It is. It doesn't try to hide that. It is a Euro game. It uses dice, which I usually really enjoy. It has a bit of kind of area control in it as well, which I tend to enjoy. Um, but as I said, yeah, it's a, it's a very... Um, mechanism driven game it's it's not a thematic game it's um you know it's almost a, a warts and all exposed kind of game it doesn't try to hide what it is is what i'm trying to say um but that being said um i'm not saying that in a negative light whatsoever i i kind of like you know i like uh euro style games i like games that focus more on the mechanisms than theme you know theme is a very low on my criteria where i kind of rate the quality of a game so you know i'm able to get past that but what does fascinate me about this game is how those mechanisms are so different to everything else. It really does have a unique feel to it. There is nothing else that I can really relate to our two because, as I said, those mechanisms are, they are so raw and so, um, you know, they are so dry. But at the same time, they are very unique and they are fun too. Um, so the idea of the game is you are basically... Um, I don't know, you're pulling the strings in this kind of medieval French town. Um, you're trying to fight off um, invaders, people trying to do you know, harmful things to the town. You're trying to manipulate these different activity cards in the town to your advantage to get prestige um, in terms of points or influence, which gives you kind of manipulation of your dice um, and stuff like that. So it's a game that plays, as I said, it plays one to four players and the solo mode is pretty good too if you're into your solo games. Um, but let's, let's get started on those mechanisms of the game. So the game is basically broke down into pretty, you know, pretty systematic formula where every, every round you are going to um, draw a couple of these event cards outside the city, which is going to be kind of harmful things that people or all the players have to kind of deal with and manage. And they could be such things as, um, you know, they're trying to, you might have to pay a certain amount of money every turn as long as those invaders are outside, or you might have to pay a certain amount of influence or lose cubes from the, um, the cathedral which people are trying to build and stuff like that. And you're basically... Um, they, they accumulate these black dice and you have to use your dice in order to combat those. And if you do combat those, you get um, more influence, which is, as I said, used to re-roll your dice and stuff like that. And, um, and, and the like. And also there's like um, uh, the people who kind of fight off the most um, biggest part of those invasion cards gets points in return as well. In a, as I said, in an area control style manner. So that's one part of the game and it's like a, um, an additional little part of the game where you have to, um, you allocate your kind of workers into these different fields and those fields are kind of military, you've got your religion and you've got your kind of merchant style built, um, guild as well. And all those different guilds are assigned to a different dice color that is. You've got, you've got your red dice for the military, you've got the yellow dice for the merchants and you've got the white dice for like the religion. And um, those, those are all really important because they really do dictate what you can do on your turn. And in the main turn, you're kind of allocating your dice to do certain things. And you can allocate one dice, two dice or three dice to do those actions. Um, and they are kind of cool things of these cards. You've got these uh, activity cards, as I said, and one is exposed each round. So your choices kind of expand or funnel open as the game develops. So as I said, every round a new one is uh, a new one is unveiled, opening more and more decisions to be made. And those 
activity cards are a big kind of crux of the game because they allow you to do a lot of things to manipulate your resources or um, bolster your powers. You've got kind of one-off abilities or you've got like um, kind of stagnant ones where you can choose to trigger when you like. And they can be such as turn in influence for money or turn in money for points or turn, I don't know, maybe allocate your red dice as archers to shoot out at the uh, invaders and stuff like that. So for a, for a very dry game, uh, and it is a dry mechanical game, the use of those activity cards in terms of its theme is very well done. I mean, it is still very abstract and very Euro in feel, but the the way that they are tied together is very interesting. As I said, just, just an example of one of those is, as I said, the Archer card. So what you'll do is you'll allocate your red dice, which are your military dice, um, onto, onto the Archer card, and you will basically... Um, or every every one of these activity cards has a kind of modifier on them. So say I dedicated three dice to it, um, one's a two, one's a two, and one's a four. So that's um, eight in total. And then everything will have a modifier on it. So as I said, this might say divided by two. So what I do is I'll take those eight and divide it by the two, which gives me four, which gives me four attempts to roll at, um, to roll, and if I roll, say, a three or above, I get to um, fight off one of those area control spaces on those invasion cards. Now that probably sounds quite complex, but I assure you it's not. But almost everything has a um, has a modifier or a division which needs to be done by. Um, obviously, the better the or the higher the ratio is, like some might say divided by four, probably the better ability you're going to get in return. And as I said, I really like the way that the a new one of those activity cards is unveiled every round for each of the different kind of principalities, as I said, the religion, the merchants, and the um, military. So, as I said, the, the decision space opens up and opens up and opens up, and it doesn't start off being so overwhelming. You know, your choices are fairly limited in the in the beginning of the game. So that's one of the kind of unique, um, you know, mechanisms about it, is the, the fact that you are using your dice to be divided into using these different abilities. And as I said, you use your influence to manipulate them. So if you have a really poor roll, you can spend a certain amount of influence to maybe flip them all over um, and get better dice, you know, dice pips in return. Or you can maybe just use one influence to roll the dice again, or you can spend two influence to get these new workers, which let you um, move them onto these different regions, which can get you more dice of a certain color going forward in the game. Um, so that's, that's as I said, that's one of the kind of unique um, ways the game works. Another unique way the game works, and probably funny enough, is something I was terrified of when I bought the game. I thought it was going to be far too nasty, uh, far too cutthroat and in your face. And that is the idea that you can buy other people's dice without their permission. So as I said, everybody has their own pool of dice to start at the game, but those dice are very much at the mercy of other people for taking. Because you can, as I said, without their permission, you can pay money to that player to take that dice and use it for yourself. And that depends on how many dice you're using for a certain um, certain action. So if you're just using the one die in isolation, you only have to pay them two. If you're buying, or if you're using as part of a set of two dice to be used as an action, you have to spend them four money per die. And if it's for three dice, you have to pay them six for each of those dice you buy. So there is, it really does ramp up. And obviously they're getting something in return because you are paying them for those dice so they can obviously buy your dice back in return but um, the good dice are going to get lapped up pretty quickly so you've got to be careful about that and also you cannot use the influence in order to roll other people's dice or re-roll other people's dice that is. So I actually really do like this mechanism of the game. It does completely nullify a lot of the strategy you're going to set your mind on because um, because you are constantly being or having to adjust, in fact, you're being forced to adjust your plans each round because people are just taking the dice you plan to use. Um, I thought I would really hate that, but I actually really like it because it forces you to be um, more versatile. It turns it into a more of a tactical game, um, a bit less of a brain burner. It takes the edge off it a bit, but it, again, it is very cutthroat. And typically, I'm not a cutthroat player. I kind of a bit of a a bit of a care bear really but in terms of this game I think it works really well and I said it really is the kind of crucible of the game it's where the game really does come alive and as I said there's nothing else like that on the market 
And again, I love games that feel unique and this does have a very unique feel to it because of that mechanic alone. Um, I, just, I just really enjoy that, um, which as I said, I didn't think I would. And that's going to be how the game is going to basically kind of tick along. You're going to use dice to either, you know, get money to use these activity cards. You can build the cathedral, which gets you influence or um, points as well. Um, you've got secret objectives, which is another cool mechanism because you, the secret objectives aren't only apply to yourself, they apply to the other players too. So you've got to be a bit more switched on in learning what the other players' objectives are so that you can leech on and piggyback, piggyback off them in order to maximise your points. And you can also try and maybe um, use a bit of bluffing to convince them that you're going for something when in reality you, you're trying to lead them down the wrong path so they don't get more points from your secret objective. Um, so yeah, I do like that as well. Um, as I said, I really feared that the game was going to be really brain burnery and kind of a bit too dry. But it's not like that at all. It actually flows really nicely. There are some tough decisions and some mathematical decisions you have to make as the game develops. But... All of those are in isolation and you have to take each turn in its stride because as I said, the strategy is almost snatched away from you because people are going to be nicking your dice at all times. So every turn is kind of in isolation. You have to um, work with what you've got to maximise your points and I do like it. The game lasts about an hour and a half to play and that does feel right. It doesn't outstay its work on which I thought it might. The analysis paralysis is there or is there to people who are vulnerable to it but it's certainly not as bad as I thought it would be. You can definitely play this quite, you know, quite, you know, laser cool and quite relaxed. It's not overly um, brain burnery unless you really want it to be. But as I said, the, the real kind of part of it is, um, you know, which dice you're going to use, if you can afford to buy other peoples, what the divisions are going to be to use those different activity cards. Um, you know, are you going to try and leech or try and win those majorities on those invasion cards to try and get them more points in return and that's you know that's that's the crux of the game really um i think the game is super well balanced um because as i said even if you're having all your dice snatched off you you can you know you're compensated in return of, of money which again lets you do a lot of things in this game money is very important um, you know, the different things you can do are all very balanced. Um, I, I just really like the, the way the whole game is tied together in a very nice package. Um, there's nothing superfluous there, which I thought there might be. I, I feared there'd be kind of mechanisms for mechanisms sake. And there isn't. It's actually relatively smooth. It ticks along nicely. There's, I don't know, it's just, it's a very well put together and well designed game. And I can certainly see why people really do praise this now. Um, I said from the face of it, it is very dry and I don't think this is going to apply, um, appeal to people who don't like um, Euro games in general. It's not going to change the mind if they don't. Um, the mitigation is there for the dice, which is nice because um, the influence which is used to manipulate your dice is not too scarce a resource. You can get it quite quickly and you really use it to your advantage. Um, so yeah, overall, I think the game is uh, really well designed and I think it's a bit of a a slow burner for me as well um, because there is so much variability in the game there are so many different setups of the game because um, each of those different regions the yellow the red and the white only use three cards around and there is lots of different variation in there as well so every game you're going to get different cards that come up you're going to get different invasions that come up and every game is going to feel very different in that respect um, the, I love the, the ability of having to stay on your toes because, again, you're going to have to constantly adapt your strategy based on what's available, how much money you've got, what activities are available, what's going to um, you know, take away from you in terms of the people invading the city. So, yeah, you've got a lot to think about in this game in a relatively small package of rules. Um, as I said, it is very dry, but that doesn't, it's not going to detract you too much if you like this style of game. Um, it doesn't outstay its welcome, as I said. The player uptime is good because you just take one action at a time. Um, as I said, be wary of AP sneaking into some players because it is going to happen. But again, don't worry about it being a, a key kind of criticism of this game because it's no more AP prone to your average Euro, in my opinion. Um, the artwork is something that's going to be, I think it's going to divide opinion. Uh, personally, I really like it. I like that kind of primitive medieval feel, those almost, um, you know, very flat drawings. 
um, very kind of typical of the time. I think it looks really good. I think, it, again, it looks unique. There's nothing else that looks quite like it. Uh, the board is actually quite nice looking in, in terms of like the box art. It's quite different. Um, it has this kind of sky or bird's eye view down of a city. Um, there's a nice kind of places for everything to sit. And again, I like the look of it. It said it's not going to be for everybody. I've, I've seen people look at this box and go, what the hell is that? That looks terrible. But I guess it's a more of an acquired taste. So bear that in mind. Um, all the symbology on the game is, it's okay. It's not too bad. Um, and once you get your head around it, it's going to be easily manageable. And there's a good player reference in there as well. The rule book is decent. And as I said, for a game that is quite mechanical, rules wise, it's not overwhelming. Um, there's just a few things you've got to get your head around in terms of buying the dice of other players because um, it's again it's a very unique concept. Um, component quality absolutely fine, no worries at all. Um, no no cheap shortcuts here, absolutely fine and up to scratch. And set up a tear down time as well, no worries at all. Um, probably takes five ten minutes to set up, no worries. So overall, um, I think this game is excellent. It is, sits at about eight out of 10 for me at the moment, which again is very high um, because I'm quite stingy on my game racing. So it does get an excellent verdict from me. But as I said, I think it's gonna be a bit of a slow burner for me. I can see this even getting higher than that. The more I kind of delve into it and understand the strategies and how to play, play the game more efficiently and more kind of viciously even, which is strange for me to play, to say, sorry. Um, you have to, if, if you're going to introduce this game to somebody, you have to tell them that, you know, their dice are not their own. You really do have to make that clear because if they aren't aware of that, they're going to be very frustrated. They're not going to, you, you know, they've got to be aware that they can't strategize to the degree that they want to. This is more of a tactical game um, with strategy there. And there are very meaty decisions to make and, you know, cool efficiency choices to, to be made. But as I said, everything is so fragile. You can just have your plans snatched away from you in a second. And as I said, that is the crux of the game. So if you have enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.